Um, what do you make of, you know, this, this move by Dr. Ezekwesele? It's all getting curious and curious by the minute. Um, it's interesting that uh, she would, first of all, withdraw from the uh, race at this time. And secondly, withdraw because she wants to create a coalition, right? Essentially build a third force. I think that's the key word we should always have at the back of our minds, that, you know, there is a need, according to her and a whole bunch of other commentators and the public at large, that there's a need to challenge this false uh, dichotomy between um, these two political parties. And what do I mean by that? If you look at the uh, people in both political parties, I mean, before now, there's just been a raft of people defecting from one political party to another party. So, uh, prima facie, they're, they're the same people. It's the same political class that just change, you know, uh, political garment, so to speak. But do you see her followers following her to this coalition, seeing that her party, they, they're denouncing yeah, her? Yeah, that's, that's the interesting now. part of it, the fact that the party would denounce it. But it tells you really about the lack of political ideology that drives political participation in Nigeria. Political parties are just uh, special purpose vehicles for winning elections. There's really no intellectual, emotional content in the way they present their views. And it's, you can tell by just the absent of real concrete conversations about the real problems of Nigeria over this electoral cycle. Yes, uh, the, uh, the incumbent party can point to some of the work they've done, a lot of work in infrastructure, give them not for that, their social uh, investment uh, program, you know, trader money, as controversial as it might seem. Yes, but those things are tinkering around just the causes, not the, uh, the effects, not the causes, right? So that everything we've, we've seen has just been a tactical uh, calculation. The need for a third force, a third party, is to actually challenge this narrative, or this binary narrative that we only have two political parties in this country. Uh, the dissolution and the disengagement from Obi from her own political party is just underscores the fact that even if within the context of the third force, the, the lack of party ideology also afflicts them, no matter how well intended they but, might but be. But from their statement, yes. they're saying it looks like she was planning something else, trying to be minister. I'm not even sure under which political party that would emerge at the end of the day, yes. but rumored finance minister yeah, that but, she you know, didn't but, tell but, them. I mean, the thing about it is that there's always this nature, there's this tradition in Nigerian politics, not to look at issues, but to personalize issues. So everything revolves around the personage of political part uh, participants, right? It's ironic that a political party will now tell you that their own political candidate, who went through a primary process, who decided, okay, after a particular uh, outing on television, decided perhaps we might want to uh, form a new coalition so that we'll have a fighting chance against the two behemoths, which is actually, uh, they're not two behemoths, it's a unitary behemoth, right, the PDP and the APC, right? It just speaks to the larger challenge of political development in Nigeria, the fact that political parties do not represent in any shape or form ide ideology, not even ideas, but they're just special purpose vehicles for winning elections. So I've been reading a couple of comments, uh, mm. you know, following trailing this, reactions from people, social media, and a few of them who felt that they were going to vote for her are quite disappointed. And some are even asking, is it that she didn't think that she had a fighting chance? Yeah, may think? maybe. Well, the truth about it, if you look at the, you know, the statistics of, I think, in the last elections, uh, the APC and PDP won maybe 90, uh, horrendous percentage of the votes, and the actual third force was about 300,000, perhaps, maybe 1.08%, if my memory serves me right. The important thing that we're hearing, we're seeing here is that this is actually an inflection point. So there are two things I would say to the people who, follow Obi. And she does have a large, you know, uh, base of people who respect her work, respect her, person, her own personal integrity, is that whatever she sees she's doing is on the basis of her own understanding of what needs to change in Nigeria. You can, she, it is very clear that we're at an inflection point in the longer historical narrative of Nigeria, right, that things have to change, right? And why is this so? Um, I think earlier on today on your program, this morning, they were talking about the historical cycles of Nigeria from the first one was 1959, then 1979, and then 1999, and now we're now in 2019. Every 20 years, something significant happens, and this is where we are now. So it's important for us to step back, right, from the minutia and just the hot air about politics and elections and looking at it not just tactically or as an event, but look at the entire process of Nigeria's evolution towards this experiment with democracy. This is an inflection point. The fact that there's the emergence of a credible third force means that there's a challenge to the old order. 
we have to look at this thing also within historical terms, right? I gave you the 20-year cycle, which is just one um, historical uh, milestone of looking at what is actually happening. The seeds of today's challenges were sown over the last three, four, five, six decades. The other important thing you have to realize is that as an inflection point, we're seeing the end of an old order that started from 1966 when the military took over, right, and created what I always famously call the military political com complex, the military political complex. So since 1966, the military has never quite left, right? So we're at that point where Nigerians are now beginning to see that do we begin to think about our future? Who ended there? Sorry? Who ended there? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Tunji Ladner, political analyst, for joining us a long time. Yeah.